Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today it's time for a uh, somewhat of a quick tip in uh, Keyshot 8.1 Pro to be exact. We're going to be looking at how you can change any object into a light source. All right, here we go. Okay, everybody, so we're in Keyshot 8.1 Pro, and uh, this is going to be a fairly short video, but nevertheless, uh, a pretty important feature that I think you will love once you understand how to use it, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn any, any object into a light source, and I'm going to show you how to do that, how to tweak the settings as well, and how to apply it to a model. So I loaded up this Camaro here, and uh, first of all, I'm going to set up the scene a bit better so we don't have this uh, car hovering in space. So I'm just going to go in here to my backdrops. Let's see, we'll do a studio backdrop, and I'll take uh, this one right here, a fairly dark one. Then we need to tweak the settings, so I'm going to go to my lighting tab, and I'm going to go with jewelry setup. Uh, for the simple reason that it has a lot of elements that I want to use. For example, uh, uh, grand illumination, self shadows, uh, global illumination, and so forth. Now I can go in here and increase the shadow quality if I like. Uh, let's see, I have ray bounces that I can play with. It does have uh, caustics, I don't really need that here. Uh, there is some glass in the car, of course, but I think that's okay. But overall, I think this is a good setup to start with. Now, like I said, I'm going to create an object that I'm going to turn into a light source. So in this case, I want to create a spotlight out of a cube. Now, take a moment to understand how powerful this is. Let's say you have a, a kitchen scene where you want, uh, you know, those uh, hidden lights in your kitchen uh, to be positioned. You can use the exact shape of a cube or whatever that light shape is and simply do that, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to uh, Edit and we're going to go to Add Geometry and let's do a simple cube. We'll give it a sec. And if we now go into our scene here, you'll see that a cube has been added. Now, uh, because we have our position tool uh, active, and if you have not, and I'll just show you how to do that, you simply double click on the cube that has been created, and if you can't click it from here, we'll do it from here. There you go, we got it. And then you're going to go to the uh, move tool right there. So click on that, you got all the options available, you can turn on or off skill, translate and whatnot. In this case, we want to have uh, the translate, okay? So we're going to move the cube up the cube sorry we're going to move the cube up until it's hovering above the car somewhere like this and then it's time to turn it into a light source so what are we going to do we're going to double click on this guy and then we're going to go in here and we're going to go into the type and we're going to change the fuse into uh, spotlight and as we do that you will immediately see a very bright light on top of the car let's just to get rid of this we're going to click on the green arrow there but you can see clearly that um, there's a lot of very bright light going on on our car here, and it is in fact a spotlight. So a couple of things we need to do here to make it look right. First of all, I want to move it a little bit, and I want to change uh, the settings. So uh, we have the light still selected. I can change the color, for example. I can go in here and click on the white, and I'm going to use the color picker to get the same yellow as on the car. So I'm going to click on the color picker, and I'm going to go in here to the back, and click on the light there that changed the color of my light and we're going to click on OK and then also what I want to do is I want to change the beam angle so we'll play with that so we've got a bigger area right like so the fall off be careful with that you can see the effect there but if I push this down to this area right here we'll just have that play out you can see that when I push it to the right, the edge of the light is very faint and soft. And when I push it to the left, it's very hard and crisp. Okay, so that's what you want to play with to see whatever your, your preference is. And then, of course, the radius. Now, the thing there is that when you start moving that around, you know, it has a huge effect. So I'm just going to try and keep that pretty much where it is like that. So I'm happy with that. I think the power is a bit much. So let's bring that down. You kind of need to find out when it takes effect. But this is starting to look okay. There you go. I think that's much better. So that's all good. Uh, one thing I need to do is to move the light a little bit, the light source itself. As you can see, the back car, the back of the car is not covered as good as everything else. 
So I'm going to go in here and make sure my cube is selected. And then we're going to go in and move that. So there's the move tool. Let's slightly move that in this direction. And then we want to slightly push it back like so. Now I think that looks okay. So we're going to position this for a render like so. And we'll simply do a render to give you an idea what this can look like, right? So we're going to go into our image here, and I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to leave all of that alone, maybe some vignetting, but nothing crazy like that. We're going to go into the camera. Uh, perspective camera is good. Leave all of that alone. Uh, depth of field, not going to play with that. Lighting will increase the shadow quality and the ray bounces a little bit. The environment, you can add a pin light if you want. Let's see. No, we'll not do that. We'll turn that off. So we'll leave that alone and we're good to render. So I'm going to go up to uh, render. We're going to go to the render tab, open that up. Let's call this Camaro and I'm going to save this on my desktop. Like so. 1920,080 is good. 300 DPI is maybe a bit much. 100 is fine. And here we go. Well, there you go. I think it turned out okay. Uh, but nevertheless, this gives you a good impression of how powerful that can be if you want to use any object to create a light source, right? Well, that's all this to it. So thank you very much for checking out this uh, short video. If you have any questions, as always, let me know in the comments. And uh, that said, have a great day. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.